Jamie and Stoney on 97.1 The Ticket. The NBA trade deadline was Thursday. The Pistons made a couple of moves. Reggie Bullock goes to the Lakers. Stanley Johnson uh, ends up with the New Orleans Pelicans. And uh, the Pistons uh, bring in Svi Mikhailik from the Lakers and Thon Maker from the Milwaukee Bucks. Ed Stefanski, senior advisor for the Detroit Pistons, joins us now here on 97.1 The Ticket. Ed, good morning. How are you, sir? Good, Jamie, and I hope, uh, Stoney, you better tie him down because it's a little windy out there today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, th- I think he just made a big head joke. Yeah. Um, Ed, uh, what, uh, you know, we debate here all the time, buyers or sellers, buyers or sellers. Um, was that a strong debate within the organization, or did you have an idea of how you wanted to handle this situation, or did you have opportunities to do both? Yeah, I think, well, we had – more opportunities to be a little bit of a seller with with our situation uh, there's no secret we are cap restrictive uh, we don't have much wiggle room so we don't have a lot of room to make deals with cap space so we have to make a little moves on the side here which i think we did but we got these moves where we got players that we think are good prospects with rookie contracts which is huge for us and uh, Thon Maker can play in the NBA right now. Steve is a rookie. The kid can flat out shoot the basketball, which is exciting. Plus, we got a, a second round pick. So, uh, you know, when you, if you get two second round picks, yeah, it's great to, to replenish our seconds. But to have a name attached to a, uh, one of those guys right now in Steve, that's exciting for us. So, we got two players, rookie contracts. We got Bruce Brown and Kyrie Thomas, rookie contracts. We have a young player in Kennard. So now we got some young guys, as I said, under manageable contracts, and now we have to play. And we're, we're still trying to make that, uh, the playoffs. There's no question about that. And we'll also look uh, as a buyer on the buyout market to see if there's anyone that can help us immediately. I mean, the name everybody's mentioned is Wayne Ellington. So you, you brought it up, so I'll, I'll get to it. You talk about making the playoffs. Uh, from a fan's perspective, and then it, it makes little sense to me to try so hard to make the playoffs where the organization is kind of in, like a, a lot of these teams, Ed, as you know, are in kind of that, that limbo. They're not bad yeah. enough to get a really great lottery pick, but not really good enough to contend. So my question is, why is making the playoffs good for this organization as opposed for at least, I don't know, tanking for lack of a better word or not playing a lot of your best players the rest of the, war, the the season so much so you can at least get a really good chance a better chance at Zion or one of the other guys well I hear you with Zion uh, I, I can't talk specifically I understand right. uh, what how exciting that that young man is but uh, uh, from Tom Gores down uh our task is to play every night and to compete and to try to win. So that's how we're going to do it. Uh, I hear the argument. I've been on different sides of uh, listening to it at different teams. Uh, I feel good that even if we uh, made the playoffs uh, with uh, Greg Kalinsky, who I brought in uh, from the Nets, who was years ago with me and myself, we will, I think we, we have a good eye to find players. I'm very confident about that. And, and I'm not going to argue with you as the lower you go or the higher you go down in the draft, uh, the better chances are. But we're, we're in it to try, to try to win every game. I don't know how it's going to go, but uh, we feel now we have a nice little uh, young nucleus of players. Uh, we're going to try to still be in that buyout market. So, but, but, but long range, what good does it do for an organization to, best case scenario, realistically, you get an eighth seed, you maybe win a game as opposed to like we talked about, you know, being in a better position to get better picks. We're competitive. We're, we're going to try to win. I mean, I, I don't, I really don't defend when you try to win with every game. That's how the makeup of this organization is. And, and that's how we're going to go. Ed, we were talking earlier this morning and I, and I said, if there's one guy out there who, you know, when he wakes up this morning to get ready for the game, against the Knicks. I'm thinking about Luke Kennard and what his role is on this team. Obviously, Reggie Bullock was your best perimeter shooter. He's now playing for the Lakers. Um, Blake has been a, an effective perimeter shooter. Luke Kennard obviously has this this upside to him, and, and 
do you view these last, uh, you know, this part of the regular season, the future? I mean, there are obviously reports about a trade. I don't know if you can comment on those reports with Memphis that Kennard was a no-go. What what does the, the last few days mean in your mind for what Luke's role is on this basketball team? I'm a, a Luke Kennard fan as well as our uh, organization. I think team, teams are fans and everyone gets impatient. We're Listen, everybody's impatient and they want instant success. This kid has only played a year and a half of NBA basketball. He lost his whole off-season summer, which is huge. And, he, I mean, there's no doubt you can see the skills that this young man has. Uh, he's one of our best playmakers on the team. He's one of our best shooters on the team. I think as he just gets uh, more feel, more experience in the game, he'll get better and better. And uh, I think you see now – how he can get into the lane, that little pull-up he has, uh, his footwork is good inside. Again, I could go through the NBA with you for years and say, look at this guy. He didn't get it till the third. He didn't get it till the fourth yeah. year. I think there's talent in this guy. And to trade Luke for an unknown talent down the line, I, I just I think you got to be patient. Was there any, and Jamie mentioned Memphis, the whole Mike Conley stuff, was there any, were you guys investigating that at all? And if so, why? We talked to every. I won't talk okay. about individual okay. players, but we, we talked to Stoney. We talked to every team. Uh, I th- I really believe our front office with uh, Sasha and Cook, the, uh, Malik Rose, Pat Garrity, Andrew Loomis. They've been on the phones for weeks now, and we we talked to every team over and over. You know, there was proposals back and forth with teams, but it takes two to make a deal, and uh, it, you know these were the two deals we came up with. Uh, the larger deals. I'm not surprised, uh, may not have had a chance because of our lack of uh, cap flexibility. Another player that was talked about, at least by us, and I'm guessing in some of your conversations, was Ish Smith uh, with an expiring contract as well. A very valuable player to you, and I would think a valuable player to other teams. Injuries have plagued him this year. Was that a factor at all in discussions you had with teams, or you just didn't find anything to your liking? Well, I, I think of any player... You know, I think we we didn't see – if we didn't see a deal that made sense, we weren't going to do it. And mm-hmm. I'm with you. Ish is uh, – w- when he's healthy, and hopefully he's healthy right now, um, that uh, he he's he's a very big factor because – and, you know, it's just not uh, basketball on the court. It's the chemistry-wise. When he goes in there, the other guys perk up. I guess it's the pace he plays with and how he plays. But uh, he's looked on as a leader of the team, uh, one of the leaders. Uh, and so – uh, you know, I, as I said, I know my friend is not uh, with me, but we're, it's, he's going to be an integral part on us trying to make uh, the playoffs. I, I mean, I, I, I know the <laughs> schedule. I know, I know what you're saying. I, I've made this point on the radio since his injury back in December. I, when he was on the floor, and, I, and I, I, I'm not saying he's as valuable as Blake. I'm not putting it that far. But when he went down, it coincided with, the, with, with that losing streak in December. Now, you were playing some really good teams. I know the schedule got more difficult. You started to travel outside the time zone. So there were a lot of mitigating factors. But there was no doubt that when Ish Smith went out of your lineup, things did change for this basketball team. Yeah, Jamie, our record, I don't have it in front of me, with Ish out has been god-awful. Yeah. Been absolutely awful. When, and, you know, that's part of our, our, our issue. We don't have a lot of uh, depth. We're trying to build that depth. So when a, one or two guys go down, you're just not devastated. You shouldn't be like that. Um, but when Ish went out, we uh, mu- we struggled mightily. Don't take this the wrong way, but you, are you going to uh, <laughs> play a lot of the younger guys like Kyrie and Bruce Brown's played a lot already? And obviously, you know, Thon and Svi, well, we, you need to see them play the rest of the way, regardless of how you feel about the playoffs. Yeah, that's a good question. And I, you know, as a personnel guy, Tony, I my I I lighten up at the games when I see the young guys go in because uh, I I go back to a guy Stoney knows, Jimmy Lynham from Philadelphia, who's been in the college ranks and the pro coach. He always said to me, "You want to get the rookies a taste. Play them a few minutes in the first half, and if they do okay, play them maybe a couple minutes. They can't lose the game." I'm of that theory. I love the idea. Now, Bruce Brown has played right. an unbelievable amount of minutes, maybe too many minutes uh, he, uh, uh, that he's played this year. But that, it's great experience. Kyrie is getting some time. The coach loves both those guys. So I'm with you. Uh, if 
I, I think Son definitely is going to play. And if we can get some minutes received, that would be good too. But, but again, we're still competing with those guys. Do you think I, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not trying to walk you down any sort of tampering roads here. So I'll just ask you generally, <laughs> do you think this summer is going to be a lot of these two year contracts with player options? Like some of the bigger names in this league have signed in previous summers, or will you see more long-term contracts from all of these free agents? Or can you yeah, not answer I mean, the that? Money, <laughs> no, I, I just think the money is so huge that um, I don't know how guys can tur- – you know, I, I hear what you're saying, sign that two-year with it and still get out to go to the next one. Yeah, it, it, It's big to leave – it's really hard to leave that money. I mean, there's some just big-time numbers out there. Did you ever hear of the term load management before last week? <laughs> Now, Stoney, you know me. Do you think I ever heard that? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't either. Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr said yesterday he will not be managing any loads, so I don't know what the piston stance on that is. But uh... Well, you know, the, one, the, the thing that's been great for us is uh, uh, we made a move, and, and again, in the performance and the medical staff this year, and they've done a fantastic job, and knock on wood, but – Blake has played every game this year except for the two games that we did load management and we rested him for two games on back-to-back nights. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess I'm sure there's a couple back-to-backs going forward that they'll think about resting Blake. I don't want to rest Blake, but um, <laughs> it's a new it's a new way of thinking. And uh, I have a lot of friends in this business that are on the performance side and, and the gurus of the business and. A couple of them told me that you don't know for about 10 to 12 years after uh, all the data is in if this made any sense or not. Well, Arnie Kander's back with the team, so that's that's why they're healthier, right? That That's one of the gurus I was speaking to. Hey, Ed, we really appreciate the time. Good talking to you, and we will talk to you soon. Okay, Jamie, take care of my friend there. I will try. <laughs> I always do. It doesn't usually work it's very effectively. It's a, very, it's a great task. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks, right. Ed. Ed Stefanski, senior advisor for the Detroit Pistons, here on 97.1 The Ticket.